he was awarded the IM title in 1953, and then two years later, the Grandmaster title. His career was highlighted by three Czechoslovakian chess championships and two tenures as a world championship candidate. Uh, and he retired in Czechoslovakia and was pretty inactive from international tournaments after 1981, but continued to play uh, on a local level and participate as a chess commentator for various periodicals until he passed away. And uh, he did reach, um, what was his peak ranking in the world? It was high, it was like eighth in the world or something like that. <clears throat> Let me check that for you real quick. Miroslav Philippe. I should have had that ready. My apologies on uh, not being ready with that statistic. There he is. Oh, my mistake. He was number 17 in the world uh, between November 1961 and April 1962. But still, top 20 is not uh, a bad result, is it? Well, let's take a look at uh, some of his games. And by the way, let me go ahead and greet our members of the audience. Greeting Jonathan um, and Unplugged over in the Chess TV chat room. And who do we have over here in Twitch TV? Uh, let me get into the right screen here so I can see it with my eyeballs. And uh, greetings to Roadkopf, Bad Rabbit, Neon Seagull, Petronov Sinka, and Vidather, it looks like. And we're so glad you're here as well, as well as many who are... Um, lurking in the shadows just enjoying the chess commentary we're all we're glad you're all here and uh, we certainly hope you enjoy the the show well let's get right into the first game which was played against and he's black so let's flip it over it was played against grandmaster gideon bartza um, who, by the way, was an eight-time Hungarian chess champion. Barca was born August 21st, 1911, and passed away February 27th, 1986. And uh, definitely a top player in his prime as well. The game was played at Bucharest on January 1953, round four of that event. Barca begins with the King's Pawn opening and a Sicilian defense by uh, today's Grandmaster. Knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, and knight takes d4. So we have an open variation on the board. And after knight f6, knight c3, g6 is the dragon variation. And it's called that because of the shape of the pawns. The pawns make the shape of a dragon, apparently. <clears throat> Bishop to e3. And bishop g7. Hello, Thibaut to Baker. Greetings. Pawn to f3 is the Yugoslav attack. And kingside castles and knight to b3. Bartza leaves the opening book. He could have continued in the opening book with queen to d2. Knight to c6. Bishop c4 is the main line. 
Bishop d7, queenside castle, rook c8 is the old line. And then um, bishop b3, knight e5, h4, h5, bishop g5, rook c5, king b1. And that uh, concludes the old line. And the most common continuation from this point uh, goes on with b5, g4, a5, g takes h5, knight takes h5, knight d5, and rook e8. <clears throat> Bart's are leaving the book line on move 8 and playing knight to b3. Knight to c6. And you'll see this knight make its way to c4 during the course of the game. Queen to d2. This seems to indicate that he'll be queenside castling. And bishop to e6. A strange looking move to have a bishop in front of the pawn, but in this situation, um, it's a little more sensible. Hello, bad rabbit. Knight d5 and bishop takes. Pawn takes. And now the knight goes to e5. And there is the queen side castle that we anticipated upon queen to d2. Now, actually, c4 has been played from this position a couple of times. Um, and it seems that if you want to play c4, you may just, instead of castling, play rook to c1. But that move does not appear in the database, so apparently the masters um, don't favor that idea. But rooks do make good pawn elevators, as I've said many, 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 many times. So I'm not clear why that's never been tried, but it hasn't. Anyway, queenside castle, queen to c7, and king to b1 brings us to the first unique position in chess history. Um, from this position, bishop d4 was played by the four-time Leningrad champion, Grandmaster Alexander Tolush, and he was playing against the two-time Leningrad champion, uh, Vyacheslav Osnos. That game was played at the 1960 Soviet Championship in Vilnius, Lithuania. Game. Rook F to C8. And we have a new follower already. Welcome, Eric Dolphy. Thanks for joining the party. All right, so Rook F C8, and we can see that Black has a slight edge with better development and better uh, peace activity than white enjoys. But it's not a, a major lead. C3, blunting the king's bishop as well as putting a damper on the battery from the queen and the rook. <clears throat> A5, bottom of the six wants to know why did black not use his knight to capture um, let me go back you mean here <clears throat> he wants to know how about knight takes. Well, the problem is these two guys are being forked if you play knight takes. 
Ouch. Ouch. That hurt. So we can't let ourselves get behind that quickly. So for that reason, he took with the bishop. All right, knight e5, queenside castle, queen c7, king b1, rook fc8, c3, a5, a5 wants to attack here. Thibaut does not like the c3 move, saying it creates a bit of a hook for black, for black's pawns. Black can advance his B-man and weaken the pawn wall. Well, in a lot of situations, you'll actually even see a piece sacrifice on this pawn, T um, Thibaut to Baker. Knight d4. Knight c4 hits the queen. Bishop takes, queen takes. I have the coronavirus points out that c3 is relatively common. Um, this idea back here, blunting this, day, especially when there's a fianchettoed bishop. When I'm playing against um, uh, the, the king's Indian, I often play c6, or any line where there's a fianchettoed king's bishop from the white side, I'll often play c6. And, um, yeah, it's not an unheard of idea. <clears throat> Hello, Gizmeister Flex. Knight d4, knight c4. <clears throat> bishop takes the knight, queen takes the bishop. Knight to c2. And here comes Thibaut's prediction. Pushing up with the b pawn, using these pawns to try to pry open the king's position. And white is going to want to prevent b4. He's going to want to try to prevent that move. Well, he played queen to d3, but perhaps knight to a3 would be a better approach. At least black would have to answer this question, wouldn't he? And queen to d3, queen retreats to c7, rook h to e1. And now b4. He resists taking, but he probably needs to take here. Bishop d4 to resist this, but <clears throat> you have to grin and bear it. And after knight takes, pawn to b5. And after a4, now bishop d4 would be appropriate. And I think that provides the best defense for white. He plays the bishop d4 immediately. Pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn. Now, alternately, queen takes pawn might simplify the position. Hey, LJ. And after queen b7, queen b3, queen takes, a takes. White decided on bishop takes c3 and rook a b8. Strongly threatening queen takes bishop. Imagine, if you will, that it was black's turn right now. If we... If it's black to move now, queen takes bishop, 
the pawn cannot take. And after queen takes queen, rook takes queen, and you come out winning an entire piece. So rook a b8 is a, a real, clear, and present danger. So king a1 steps out of the pin. And now knight takes the pawn. What a move. This move creates a lot of complication because there's a lot of decision making that has to take place here. He correctly plays bishop takes g7. Not queen takes the knight. On queen takes the knight, you have the beautiful queen takes the bishop. And then the rook has to come over to b1 if pawn takes the queen. If pawn takes the queen, mate comes right away, doesn't it? <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. So he cannot pawn takes the queen. <clears throat> so he'd have to rook takes the uh, a rook to b1. But then rook takes the pawn on b2. And it's just um, there's nothing white can do anymore to to uh, avoid mate except throwing a couple of spite checks to to delay. He can give check here and then here. And now he's out of checks, and that's checkmate. Okay. So he cannot queen takes the knight. Bishop takes the bishop is correct. King takes. Now queen takes. And now queen takes knight. And of course that threatens a magic square checkmate. And so Barca chose to x-ray defend, but I think b3 might be a better defense. Although black is really in the driving seat in any case. Queen to d2. And pawn to e5 is such an important move. What an instructive move this is, guys. Because now rook takes b2 is a winning move. Why wasn't it a winning move before? Why was this move necessary? While you're thinking about that, I'll take a look and see who just followed. Aggie 2012 following. Thank you for the follow. And welcome to the program. Well, not QC3. QC3 is um, is more than amply covered by Black's pieces, but it is blocking QD4. For example, if you were to play this first, that loses to Queen D4. Check. Forking and super attacking. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness, ladles and jelly spoons. You went from winning to losing because you got in too much of a hurry. Slow down and stink. You should always stink at chess. So, uh, hello, Gerard plays. So what a beautiful, instructive, quiet move this was. So now rook takes b2 is a winning move. Well, he played b3 here. White's in trouble. Pawn to a4, and he has to play rook to e3 to keep fighting. But he didn't. He played pawn takes a4, and... Rook b2. Now, there's no wrong way to win a chess game, but rook b1 check is just quite a bit more decisive. This rook is overworked. 
And so you make things a lot easier on yourself by attracting the rook away from the defense of the queen. And then bye-bye, queenie. I eat you like an Oscar Maya. Weenie. So, but queen, rook b2 still winning. Queen takes, rook c takes. Pigs on the seventh, baby. Oh, yeah. Rook takes d6. Rook takes a2 check. King b1. Rook c b2 check. White resigned here. So as a win is a win is a win is a win. <clears throat> now, White had an 87.87 .87 accuracy with 43.4% best moves. Black's accuracy was 98.42 and 46.7% best moves. Let's put it into the computator and watch how Stockfish plays against Stockfish from this position on. Just so you can see the technique. Notice the king is completely isolated. Nice technique. Technique is technique with the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Hey, furry footed nerve herder. Bada bing, bada boom.